today's video, An Introduction to Archaeology, the Science of Destruction, was written by Bonnie Etter, a graduate student at Cornell University, and is narrated by Mr. Andrew Carroll at Regis Jesuit High School. Archaeology is the study of human past through the material traces of it that have survived. So you can see here an archaeologist uh, being very confused by a new piece of pottery he just pulled out of the ground. Sites, a term that we often use in archaeology, is where we work. It's any location that shows evidence of human occupation. It can be towns, homes, campgrounds, hunting grounds. Here we can see a, an illustration of an area where uh, buffalo hunting was would have happened and taken place by the Plains Indians. Um, and that would also be con that would still be considered a, a, a site, even though the, main, the, the humans may not have lived there. So what are the different types of evidence? Well, there's a bunch of different categories. So there are artifacts, which is anything that humans that is made or modified by humans. It's literally ours artist skill plus facio facre uh, to make or do combined together. So examples, tools, tiles, textiles. So we have a couple of examples here of artifacts, uh, a bronze pin and a, a, a crucible fragment. Human remains, so any remains of the human body. Skeletons, mummies. Ecofacts, so these are the organic materials that hasn't been disturbed by humans. So trees that are on site that haven't been touched by pe people. Um, the slope of the land, the lay of the river. Features made or modified by humans but cannot be moved. So the example, the heads on Easter Island. And then structures, buildings or architecture, such as temples or houses. Decipher an age. So when we are digging archaeologically, we need to be able to tell how old something is. And so time is either counted in relative or absolute aspects. So absolute time is the time that we live in right now with minutes, hours, and years. And there's two major ways that we deal with absolute time in, in archaeology. There's C14 method, which is measuring the amount of carbon-14 remaining in any carbon-based entity, so organic entities. Um, and dendrochronology, which is counting tree rings from uh, the remain wooden remains left on the site. And there's been a uh, huge amount, huge databases collected of uh, tree rings, which allow us to identify the age of something by counting backwards. And we can match up the thickness of the rings with other objects to be able to tell how old something is. The relative time is just basically something's younger, something's older. So cross-dating, when you use an object um, with a known date at another site to estimate. So if you find an Egyptian scarab beetle in an Etruscan site and you find one in Egypt, you can say that they were probably made at the same time and therefore estimate the time there. But then also sequencing, so where you map the growth and decline of popularity of artifacts. So here we can see that in the, seven, uh, the mid 700s, this style of pottery was really excited, was really uh, used a lot, and it slowly tapered off. And then between 770 and 790, this style of pottery came into play. And then from about 800 onward, we have this style of pottery. So we know that if we find this style of pottery in a certain layer, we know that it had to have been coming from sometime after 770. We know that if we find this type of pottery in a layer with this pottery, we know it has to be between, uh, we, it, ha it would have had to have been in the 770s. And so we can kind of date artifacts based on this sequencing. There's a couple of laws in archaeology. There's the law of superposition. So this is the fact that dirt is laid down in layers and then builds up sequ sequentially. So dirt is laid down, more dirt is laid down, more dirt is laid down. And then the law of stratigraphy is that the further down a layer is, the older it is, and the new ones are closer to the surface. So we know that if there's a, that here, uh, up here, there's the modern topsoil. We know that things found in there are 
pretty close to being modern. Down all the way down here, we have um, a Roman road, and so we know that it has to be older than the topsoil. Now, how old? We aren't really sure, but we just know that it is older than uh, what is on the modern layers. So what can archaeology tell us? Well, everything comes down to context. Context is the place an object is found in and its relation to the things around it. Um, so knowing if an object was inside or outside, near or far from other objects can tell us who was using it and why it's used. Uh, this means it's very important to mark where an object came from uh, when working with an excavation in, in, for later interpretations. Not only marking it in uh, on the day that it's removed from the trench, but also in your the records that you keep. So we keep these records in order to allow for later interpretations. Once archaeology, as I said in the beginning, is a destructive process. Once it is done, it can never be repeated. And so that's why recording all the information uh, when an object is found is important. So we take specific locations by uh, um, are taken by using coordinates based uh, in relation to previously established grid systems. Usually, the grid is the easiest to do just because it lays everything out at right angles. I mean. You could establish a circle system, but then you would have a circle, and it's not doesn't allow for nice, easy uh, mapping. So interpretation. So when doing archaeology, it's important to understand uh, the people who lived at a site and their history. That's the whole point of archaeology is to do these interpretations to understand the past. And here we, we can see a reconstruction of what we think some of the activities people would have done in the past. Um, and so while we can use our own experience to interpret an object, something that's shaped like a, a, a bowl could in fact be a bowl, it's also important to be able to think outside of one's own perspective and, and not always assume um, what a shape, that a shape that we are familiar with may equal a shape that they would have used it for. For example, at our site, we have the Poggio Cipitate. There are a series of, of pottery fragments that have this very shallow angle and this weird um, shoulder on them before they comes up to the lip. And there's a couple of interpretations for it, but to it's very unlike anything that we have um, in mo the modern world. And so it's it's important to be able to be think outside of your own perspective. So what are the important things that you should remember when you get to a site? It's important to keep in mind you are excavating the remains of people's lives. You should approach this endeavor with respect. Also realize that it's a destructive process that once it's done, it's done. And as such, being professional and taking proper records of the context is important. So hopefully this video um, has given you a bit of an idea of some of the different terminologies and, and how they fit into archaeology um, and when we use them up here on site. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comment part, comments below, or feel free to send an email uh, to my school email address. Thanks for watching.